Recently, we had a company bring us a pallet of material for parts they were struggling with. I tried to find information online about the composition of the three metals, vibranium, adamantium, and unobtainium, but I struggled to find usable data. <laughs> little comic book and movie humor for you. But seriously, depending on the part geometry and tolerancing, even an easy to cut material can become very difficult to machine. I'm gonna share a couple of my own personal challenges, and I know we have some amazing machinists in our audience, so I'd love to hear about some of your own challenges in the comments after the video. So a couple of years ago, the company I was working for had eight variations of a C15,000 copper part to make. I took four of them and my buddy Jesse took the other four. So they were basically a triangle cut out of an eight inch cube that had about 20 different holes and threads in them with one thou true position on every hole. Some of the holes also had tight diameter tolerances like plus or minus two tenths for dowel pins and stuff. We ordered some slightly undersized drills specifically for copper. So for like a quarter inch hole, I'd order maybe a 236 drill. And the plan was to interpolate the holes the size afterward. So the drill would drill like four holes on a bolt circle and they'd all measure like 238 diameter. Then the fifth hole would completely blow out to like 260 diameter. There was no galling, no visible issues with the tool, just super inconsistent results. And Jesse had the same issue in his parts and there was really no rhyme or reason to it. It's just the way that it worked out. So in the end, we had to drill the hole way undersized and then interpolate them to size. Another recent challenge was on a large 13.8 part that needed to have 2,000 cubic inches of material removed from each forging, and we had 18 of these to do. So I programmed everything with a three-quarter roughing end mill, and on some forgings, the tool would last for five minutes. Sometimes it would last for three hours. In the end, I had to switch to using a high-feed mill just due to the inconsistency in tool life that I was getting. Another time, about 10 years ago, I had some Delrin parts to make out of some half-inch thick by one-inch wide by two-inch tall rectangles. On the top of the part, there were four threaded holes with an inch and a half deep slot running between them. The slot width was like plus or minus five thou and the holes had a true position of eight thou. But as I cut the slot, the part would relieve just wide open and the slot width and true position went bye-bye. So even though Delrin is a super easy material to cut, you might struggle with holding tolerances and positional tolerances and sizes just because of how soft the material is and how difficult it can be to fixture. You know, you can't just grab it in a vise and squeeze without deforming the part. Super alloys can also be really challenging, and we have some excellent tutorials on these in our Aerospace Academy that can help you learn how to process materials like Monel, Inconel, Titanium, Hastaloy, and Stainless. We're continuously adding new material to our academy to help teach everyone how to make super complex rocket parts and aerospace parts so that as all of these space-bound vehicle companies grow and you start building parts for satellites and rockets and spaceships, we will have already built an amazing foundation for you to be successful free of charge. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Tell me a story in the comments below and I'll see you soon.